go before us and behind us, Lord God, from the side of us, Lord Jesus. We implore your goodness on us. And we pass back up and we just thank you, Father God. We pray, Lord God, that this service today glorifies you and yeah. your own, that our lives always be a worship to you, that our lives glorify you. In Jesus' name. Crystal with her credentials, and she's become a credentialist. Yeah. 
Peter, he said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. All people, young and old. He said, I'll pour out my spirit on all people everywhere. And the, the, the promise continues to this day. Do you know that? The promise of the Holy Spirit is for today, too. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, if you don't answer me, I'm going to preach all day. Amen. So, if you want to eat lunch, you better start answering me. You want to eat dinner? Be quiet. Because I can preach all day. Amen. I'm telling you, I can preach all day. See, but, but there's a problem with Pentecost. Not this Monday, but next Monday, we celebrate what's called Memorial Day. Now, what has happened to Pentecost? Pentecost has become a Memorial Day. We remember what happened in the past, and we keep it in the past. But unfortunately, that's not the intent of it. God did not intend for us to, to just keep it in the past. Oh, that was good for Peter and Paul, but today, we don't need the gifts of the Spirit anymore. We don't need the work of the Holy Spirit. We have the Bible. We have books. We have seminars. We have preachers. We have the Internet. We have Google. Anything you want to know, Google's a, Google got the answer. A few weeks ago, Rick DeBose, he was Assistant General Superintendent of Son of God, he made this statement, and I want to read it to you. Our greatest time of growth is when we are the most Pentecostal, not when we are the least. When Pentecost is more theological than practice, it's useless. What does that say? That's saying that we can talk about Pentecost all we want to, but it, what matters is when we start practicing it. When we start practicing it. You know, my brother was a doctor. And my brother, they called it, he's practicing, he was a chiropractor. He's practicing chiropractic. And I said, why do you always, why does it, when you get it right, how come? But you know, why do you always say, practice it? Because the more you practice, the better you get. The more you practice, the better you get. The more we practice the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, the more we demonstrate it, the more power it will bestow upon us. It's coming up to us. We need the Holy, I tell you, we need the Holy Spirit today. More than ever before, we need it today. I mean, things are a mess. Things are a mess. I don't need to tell you that. Turn on the news, but don't turn on the news. <laughs> you know, they should call bad news. They just call the evening news. They should just say bad news, because that's what it is. We have the good news. We have the good news. Uh, I, 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 I. We used to sing an old song. Whose report will you believe? We believe the report of the Lord. His report says I am healed. His report says I am whole. His report says I am filled. That's the report we believe. And you see, the more knowledge we have of the Holy Spirit, the more power we have. And then when that happens, something starts to happen to us. As Christians, we can't afford to stop seeking to be filled with His power. As a church, we can't afford to remain the same. Yes, we need to be transformed, changed. As his children, we cannot, we can't afford to ignore the power of his presence in our lives. Yes. What a difference his present make, presence makes in our lives. I was watching something just last night. I I, I was an old time wrestling fan. When I say old time, Bruno San Martino. There you go, yeah. Wendy. Wendy. You are a wrestling fan. Cool beans, man. <laughs> I met Bruno one time. I was in the hospital. My dad was in the hospital. I was a little guy. And, 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 and Bruno was in the hospital visiting his wife. And, and, he, and he was standing right there. And I, 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 I was speechless. It was like, I couldn't say anything. It was just like crazy. But anyway, I was watching a documentary the other day about a guy named Sean Michael. Sean Michael was arrested. A heartbreak kid. Do you know him, Wendy? Oh, good. Here we go. Some of you know heartbreak kid. Okay. He was a wrestler, very popular. But when he started off, he was on drugs. Just terrible on drugs. And, and he, uh, he, he hurt his back and he had to quit. He got married and his wife gave him a Bible. He started going to church when he went to church. He hurt his back, he heard a disc in his back, and he said, he'll never wrestle again. He started going to church when he was in the hallway one day. He said, I need to find a Bible study. One of the pastors heard him, came out and said, I have a Bible study, stop coming. So he started coming to the Bible study, got saved. The pastor prayed for him, and uh, the pastor prayed for him one day. He went to bed that night, woke up the next day, and his back was completely healed. And, and, and he went back into wrestling, and all the wrestlers were saying his 
life was changed by the power of the presence of God. When the power of the presence of God is in your life, you're changed. If you're the way you were yesterday, then you need to spend more time in His presence. And the more time we spend in His presence, the more we become like Him. We, the church, we need the Pentecostal power once again. There's an old song that's, uh, Lord, send that power, that Pentecostal power, the floodgates of heaven, they open wide. You know, we need the power in our lives again. It's time for us as Christians to wake up and to dive into that. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Man, these guys are good. Good, good, good. Keep it up, man. But you will receive what? Power. Here we go. Let's try it. But you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and to the ends here. You don't raise your you don't need to raise your hand, but I want you to raise it in your heart. When was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? When was the last time you did it? I have a secret. It's not really a secret. The Holy Spirit will empower you that you can't stop telling people about Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, it's like Peter Paul says, we can't. We can't. Peter, uh, John and Peter, they said, we can't stop talking about Jesus. The government said, you guys need to stop it. They said, we can't stop it. Why? Because it penetrated their hearts and their minds and their spirits. It penetrated them. We need the power Amen. in our lives. You know, in the influence like trying to run a power, you know, I was cutting up some wood yesterday, and, and, and you know what, I couldn't figure out why the saw wouldn't work, then I plugged it in, and it worked, amazing, it's <laughs> amazing, what happens when, uh, when you do that, you drive a car without a battery in it, it doesn't work, you put the power source in, and it works, folks, you, put, you plug into the power source of the Holy Spirit, God will do something in your life. Like you've never did before. He said, well, I'm just, you know, I'm shy. You need the power. Well, I've never witnessed before. God will fill you with the right words to say. I remember when I was a kid when I went to school and I first got saved. I was, I was born saved. Anybody like that? I mean, I was born saved. My, 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 I was raised in the Methodist church by a spirit-filled Methodist minister. It was cool. And my dad taught Sunday school. And, and, and so I remember going to church. I tell everybody, I always had a choice to go to church or not go to church. The choice was you go to church or you die. That was my choice when I was a kid growing up. You just went to church. I had the pins to prove it. And the Methodist church gave you the pin for perfect attendance. Perfect attendance. I had it. I was perfect. And, and I grew up in the church. But, but uh, some circumstances, situations in my life, my back slid away. And, and, and when I came back to Christ, and, 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 and there's, there's, he just got a hold of me. He got a hold of my spirit. He got a hold of my life. Without the Holy Spirit in our lives, we rely on our own wisdom, on our own power. And that's what we're doing today. So many of us, we rely on what we know and what we've learned. Amen. If you rely on what you learn, what you know, that's good. But if you want to take it to the next level, you see, we have a father who owns all the cattle and all the hills. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He, he has all knowledge. He has all wisdom. And it's available to us. The Bible tells us these things are greater things for you do because I go to the Father, Jesus said. Amen. And the thing is that all those things are available to us. The healing, the strength, the power, they're available to us if we just tap into it. And the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door will be open. But we have a problem. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But mark this, there will be troubled times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, or, uh, uh, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, uh, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, having nothing, have nothing to do with such people. Now listen, this describes where we live today. This describes where we live today. That, that is it. We're living in some interesting times, some challenging times. 
But this describes where we live today. And, and the thing is that, that uh, what it says there, having the form of God is but denying its power. Denying what power? Denying the power of God in our lives. Folks, if you believe in Jesus, you have power in your life. If you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have power to witness. You have the fruit of the Spirit. You have the gifts of the Spirit. You have all those things in your life available to you. You have a arsenal of, 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 of tools available in your life to make a difference. We really do. We have it there. And it says there, in the last days, people will deny the power of God. Amen. Again, we believe so many things. You know, how many of you have, what was it called? I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't think we talked to in the house that answers us? Alexa! Thank you. Alexa, you know, I think people freak you out sometimes. You're in the other room and it answers you. Hello. You know, it just like freaks me out. Every once in a while we'll be talking and it'll answer us from another room. No. Um, but, uh, but, but, but we ask that a question. And it answers us. This, I, I did some research on it. Something interesting. If you live in, in, in Pennsylvania, within the western part of the United States, okay, Alexa's designed to answer us a different way than it answers people in the eastern side of the United States. And the southern. And the northern. And in some circumstances, in some situations, you'll get different answers. It, it, it's amazing what's out there. But we believe the seminars, we believe the internet, we believe the newspaper, we believe the news, but we don't believe the Word of God. We put more trust and faith in that than we do in the Word of God. And where does that put us? That puts us in this category. We deny the power of God in our lives. We deny it. You know, and, and the unfortunate thing is that attitude is permeated into the church, where we have become more designed for seminars, for what works, what doesn't work. I'm so glad to hear this church is going through the Acts 2 journey. And the Acts 2 journey, you see what the Acts 2 journey, I, I helped with it in the western part of, 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 of Pennsylvania, and there's a team that helps in here in the central and the eastern part. But the Acts 2 journey, you see the Acts 2 journey picks up after Acts, uh, at, at, at Acts 2, it picks up. What, what I mean by it, Acts 2 expects us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. And the Acts 2 journey is journeying through the book of Acts. So, what happened in the book of Acts? A bunch of ragtag people got together in unity in the upper room, and God poured out His Holy Spirit upon them, and they, the church grew overnight by thousands. Amen. And so, how do you deal with that? That was the Acts 2 journey is all about how to deal with this church growth. So I'm believing, I'm trusting God that God's going to pour out His Spirit here in Love Spring. Which no way, it's just not, amen. It's just not Pastor John and Crystal and, and, and the Porter. It's not just their uh, job. It's our job. It's your job. You are the church. And you see, you need the Holy Spirit. We say, oh, that's the pastor's job. The pastor's job is to prepare you to minister. That's what his job is. That's what the Bible tells us. In the last day, we need it more than ever before. We need to be like the New Testament church that saw the baptism of the Holy Spirit as a normal experience. Yeah. You see, when people were saved, and, 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 and the, there was two things. After someone was saved in the New Testament church, there was two things expected of them. They'd be baptized in water. I'm guessing that's a baptism thing. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be baptized in water, then they'd be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That was expected. Amen. In the book of Acts, that was expected. That, that's just something that, that happened. Why did the church explode during the book of Acts? Because people followed after the word of God. Amen. They were baptized in water, and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then what happened? The gifts of the Spirit started to manifest. And the fruit of the spirit, spirit started to grow. And as it grew, people changed. People changed. We should understand, without him, we can't make much difference in the world. We just blend in like everybody else. God didn't give us the baptism of the Holy Spirit just so we could speak in tongues. 
Speaking in tongues is an evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But the reason he gave the Holy Spirit is so you will have power to be a witness. Those online as well as those here, and everyone hears this. The reason for the baptism, I say that again, the reason for the baptism of the Holy Spirit is your witness. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you're not witnessing to somebody, you need to spend more time in His presence. You really do. It's the transforming power that gives us the tools. Too often we totally miss the purpose. We need the Holy Spirit because the church needs transformed. Revival is not for people who are not saved. Revival is for people who are saved. People are not saved. They need saved. That's one thing. But the church needs revived. And what does revive mean? It means brought back to life again. You know, and, and if you read in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 3, I know I'm going off script here, but just uh, flow with me, buddy. You're doing a great job. Cool. In the book of Revelation, it talks about the churches. And there's one church that said, you're not dead, but you're mostly dead. You're not dead, but you're mostly dead. And the thing is, I think that typifies the church today. Because, you know, I expect when I, you know, there, there, there's something that I like to say, and it's, it's a phrase that I use often. The atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground of miracles. If you come to church expecting God to move, guess what? He'll move. But you need to expect him to move. So I go, oh, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to sing, I'm going to do my thing, and I'm going to go. My wife and I were talking when we got here, but unfortunately, no, I'm not talking about this church, I'm talking about all the other churches. <laughs> Pastor John just said, you know, um, but, but, but churches have become country clubs for us to come and you know, connection times are important. The Bible says that we need to not forsake the gathering together of saints. That's why this time of, 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 of quarantine, this time of the pandemic has been so difficult. Because it goes against everything we as Christians believe. Because we believe we need to be together to encourage one another. The Bible says that in, in Hebrews, do not forsake the fellowship to together of saints. But encourage one another. Because the day is coming in. And it is. And we need, to, we need that encouragement. But we need to, to encourage one another to, to operate in our gifts. To move forward. Okay, let's look here. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. We've been talking about it. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blood of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed like tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. There's a couple things I want you to see from this passage of Scripture. First of all, they were all together in one place. That means they were in one, like we're all together right here in one place right now. But I believe it takes a step more than that. If you study the Scripture, by the way, if I move from side to side, can they still see me in here? I'm good. Okay. Um, because, you know, I was watching one a couple weeks ago, and the speaker was like over here, and all you saw was nothing. You hear a voice, and it's like, freaky. I hear you. They were all together in one place. Not only is that more than just a, a geographical place, I believe that's a spiritual place. Unity. They were together in one place, unified. If you study the scriptures, whenever people got together in one place and unified, God showed up. That's why it's so unity, coming together. And, and the Acts 2 journey, I'm praying, will we'll do that to us. It did for our church. Our church was one of the, the, one, the first class of the Acts 2 journey. And, 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 and what it does, it did so much for me personally as a pastor, but it did so much for our church, bringing us together. And that's the point of it. Unity is so important. When, when, when you unify on one thing, something happens. There's a lot of sports teams out there that they don't have any individual superstars, but when they all work together, they are winning. Why? Because they know each other, they work together. Their gifts complement one another. When you have one superstar, you take him out of the equation, it's nothing. Unity is so important. So they came together when suddenly a sound of blowing a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house. Where there, and it seemed like tongues of fire appeared and separated 
to each one of them. Why was there a symbol of fire? Why was, you know, you think about it. A symbol of fire, one of them. First of all, fire consumes everything that comes in contact with. Fire consumes everything. Fire is a symbol of transformation. Fire changes whatever it touches. The Holy Spirit took the group of fishermen, former prostitutes, ex-religious leaders, tax collectors, family members, and, 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 and other disciples and formed them into a unified group called the church. The Holy Spirit did that. You think about the you think about the, the disciples before Pentecost and after Pentecost. How many times Jesus said, a number of times, Jesus said to say to them, how long is God going to be with you guys? And say, you get this thing? You know, they were, and Jesus said, oh, Jesus said, I'm going to send you out and you're going to do miracles in my name. And they went out and they, they tried, they really did. But, 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 but there was one time where uh, I mean, I can't get your disciples. I'll try to have them pray for my son and nothing happened. So, Jesus says, how long do I got to be with you guys until you get it? And then there's Peter. Peter, you know, I mean, have any of you seen the series Chosen? Chosen? You need to watch it. It's, it's phenomenal. It's, Jesus is, get real things. Jesus is so cool and Chosen. It is, it's just, he's a cool Jesus. He's relatable. He, 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 you know, and it's, it's just an incredible, incredible um, uh, series. You, you, need to, you need to check it out. Uh, the Chosen or Chosen? The Chosen. But it's, uh, it, it's, it's amazing. It's, 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 really, it's really good. But anyway, the disciples, you look at their lives before Pentecost, especially Peter, and then you look at after Pentecost. They were changed. What changed them? The fire of the Holy Spirit got into their lives and burned away some things. And then empower them with tongues of fire. This is what happened. After Pentecost fell, they were united force. A united force. And, and the thing, I love this story by Charles Spurgeon. There was once a blacksmith who had two pieces of iron, which he wished to weld into one. He took them just as they were, all cold and hard, and put them on the anvil, and began to hammer them with all his might. But they were still two pieces. They would not be right. At last he remembered what he should never have forgotten. He thrust both of them into the fire. Then he took them out the red, uh, he took them out red hot, laid them on top of one another, with two blows of a hammer, they became one. What makes the church one today? The fire that will burn within us. There's never been a program that has drastically transformed people's lives. And then, and, and, and then the Holy Spirit. It turned them, changed them. The church was birthed out of the Holy Spirit. Society will not transform, any, trans, transform your life until you get a hold of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me tell you, the church needs to get a hold of it once again. We need to be known as people who burn. You know that in, 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 um, on the Zeus Street, back in the early 1900s, and I have a little booklet that, that, uh, that in there is it's, it's the newspaper uh, headlines and from the, the day of the Azusa Street Revival out in California. And there's a testimony in there that was given by the fire company. That the fire company responded to, to witness after witness of people calling them up and saying, this church is on fire. The people could actually see flames of fire coming up from this church. When they got there, the building was not on fire, or the people were on fire. But they physically, they physically saw the fire coming. We can't afford to ignore, ignore this. Matthew 3, 3, 11. John the Baptist said, I'll baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who's more powerful than I, whose sandals are not dead fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Acts 2 3, they saw what seemed like tongues of fire that separated and come to rest upon them. The fire appears on the heads of each believer in that room has a connection to the Old Testament. And I want you to see this. When Moses dedicated the temple, Leviticus 9 24, fire came down in the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat portions of the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted for joy and fell 
face down. Okay? Fire came down from heaven and, and, and it consumed the burnt offering in the tabernacle. Now let's look at Solomon a little while later. When Solomon dedicated the temple, when Solomon finished praying, fire came down from heaven, consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. You see what happened when the people in the wilderness, Moses formed the, the tabernacle, God was pleased, and fire came down and, and consumed the offering. They offered themselves up. And they, I mean, they offered up offerings. And then Solomon did the same thing at the temple. The supernatural fire and presence of God fell on this. Now this indicated to the people that God has accepted the tabernacle and the temple as his going with us. I want you to see that. When the fire came down out of heaven, it, it demonstrated to the people that God put his blessing upon the temple and the tabernacle. It was proof of God's acceptance. The Apostle Paul uses the same term to indicate in the New Covenant our bodies as a temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you receive from God, who are not your own? Amen. So here we have her. The, the, the temple was once the tabernacle, then we have the temple. Now we're saying, Paul tells us in the New Testament, that our bodies are the temple. You see? And at Pentecost, individual believers had tons of fire over them. Supernatural fire from heaven. Once again, God sent his own fire to demonstrate to everybody that he accepted the temple. Our bodies. As his dwelling place. You see? The church, we, are now his dwelling place. What signifies that is the Holy Spirit coming down and filling us with his fire. I want you to catch that. I want you to catch that. As a temple of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 6 19 tells us that we are not our own any longer. In fact, what is telling us that we <laughs> that is we are no longer alone either. Because we have the Holy Spirit living in us. We have God's Spirit. Say it with me. I have, I have God's Spirit, God's Spirit dwelling, in me. dwelling in me. Man, that should blow your mind and change your life. Do you what know it should. Because you have the power. You see what happens so often is, is it's available to us, but we don't take advantage of it. How many of you love parades? I was like, I almost had to have therapy last Thanksgiving when I couldn't watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I know, I watch it every year by myself. I used to force my kids to watch it with me. But they have one on New Year's Day too. On New Year's Day, Tournament and Roses Parade, beautiful float, float, suddenly sputtered and quit. It was out of gas. The whole parade was held up until someone could get a can of gas Fill up. The amusing thing was the float was represented by the Standard Oil Company. <laughs> vast resources of gas was available to them, but they didn't take advantage of it. Folks, we have resources available to us. But we have neglected the maintenance of that. And though we are, Luke tells us in Luke 24, 49, we're clothed with power. We find ourselves out of gas. We find ourselves out of gas. In the temple, in the burning of the sacrifices, in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12, instructions were given that the fire that fell from God should never be permitted to go out. It would be attended to constantly around the clock by the priest, so it would not go out. You see, they said the temple, the sacrifice, the fire that's going on in the temple should never go out. Folks, the fire that is within your life should never go out. Amen. But we need to fan, the, fan that flame. It should never go out. First Thessalonians 5.19 Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Don't put it out. Keep it burning. Keep it burning in your life. Keep the fire of the Holy Spirit burning in your life. Cherish those gifts. 
1 Corinthians 1 7 tells us that spiritual gifts will be in operation until the day Christ returns. Now, you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That means the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit are going to be available to us until Jesus returns. There's a teaching out there that the gifts of the Spirit will have to start at the end of the after the time of the apostles. My Bible doesn't say that. My Bible says that we have every spiritual gift we need until the return of Jesus. Amen. It's available to us. Folks, I want that power in my life. You want that power in your life? Stand up with me. It's time to practice the power of the Holy Spirit. Those of you at home online, stand up. I want you to do it as well. We're going to stand up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray, and I'm going to encourage you to pray. Lord, send your Holy Spirit upon my life. Well, let me go one step back. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. You see, you can't have the power until you have the Savior. Once you have the Savior, then you can have the power. If you study the scriptures, first of all, they were saved, then they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask our Father to send the fire of the Holy Spirit down upon our lives. You know, one of the main doctrines of the Assembly of God is we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need to start acting like it and live it. And when we do, we won't be able to contain God in us. I believe that with my whole heart. I wouldn't be doing this unless I believed it. Folks, we need to do it right now. Just, just, just lift your hands before my now. Father, we come to you right now. Just go ahead, lift your hands. You don't feel like you do it anyway. Go catch one. Father, just, just, just right now, I pray. Lord God, come on. Just start, just start thanking him right now. Say, thank you, Father. Just start thanking him right now. In, in English, speaking tongues, whatever you want to do, just, just start thanking him right now. We're going to spend a few minutes practicing the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, right now. Lord God, I pray right now for you to pour out your fire right now in this house. Father, as you pour the tongues of fire upon those disciples, and you said that you know, those gifts are still available to us until you come back. Father, pour out your spirit right now. He said, I've never, accepted, I've never had the baptism of the Holy Spirit before. The Bible says if you ask him for it, he'll give it to you. If you ask your father for a loaf of bread, he's not going to give you a stone. He's going to give you what you ask for. So just ask him right now. Father, I ask right now for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this house. Right now, in Jesus' name. Father, pour out your spirit right now. Pour out your spirit right now. Father, as we stand, as our hands are raised, we're saying we surrender. We surrender to you. And Lord, you move in our midst. And it's not something I can force upon you. This is something that the Holy Spirit will give you if you ask Him. Start asking Him right now in your own language, okay? Everyone in this room, start asking Him. If you want God to move in your life like never before, ask Him. Right now, just ask Him. Just ask Him. Right now, Father, we ask. Pour out your Spirit, Father. In this Life Spring Church, Life Spring Fellowship, let life spring up. This way, spring up a well within my soul. Spring up a well and make me whole. Father, I pray right now for this life spring church. Lord God, let's start thanking them now. Come on. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We rejoice. We're going to rely on music. We're just going to rely on the Holy Spirit. Right now, Father, pour out your spirit in this house that we can see gifts manifested like never before. Gifts of tongues and interpretation. Gifts of knowledge, of wisdom, of healing, of spiritual insight. And let the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, grow up from this, this fellowship, Lord God. I pray today in Jesus' name.
right now. We ask, we ask, Father, fill us, Lord. Fill us right now, Lord. I appreciate that. Give us something. You gotta be hungry. You gotta be thirsty. You gotta want it. And you gotta put both feet in the water. You gotta jump in with both feet. I'm like, yes, God, I want this. I want this so bad. And some of you may have been baptized in the Holy Spirit with evidence of tongues and different things years ago. But the Bible tells us to be continually filled. Every day. Every day we should go, Father, fill me with your spirit today. Once again, Father, fill us and fill this house right now. Fill us. Break down uh, barriers. Father, I break down barriers. Stones in the road to keep us from you. I break it down. And Father, I pray for a unified church. Father, I pray that you will unify this church body. That they will be a, a, a strong witness in this community. And this July 4th activity that they're having, people would say, there's a fire going on in that church. I want to be a part of it. Father, let it be demonstrated in their lives. I pray, Father. Oh, Lord, I pray. Come on, folks, don't let it go. Pursue the passion. Pursue the engaging of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I beg of you. You don't know what you're missing. God wants to do so much more than he's doing. Just be open to let him do it. Father, I pray an anointing upon this house. Father, I pray an outpour in this place. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We praise you. Now it's time to put it into action. 
action in people's lives. God will bring people into your life. He does on a daily basis. Amen. You know, my wife's been working in, 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 our, in our yard. We got a horse. <laughs> and she's been working to get under control. And, and daily people come by to talk to her. Why? They're drawn by the Holy Spirit. Let people be drawn to you by the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his countenance to you and give you peace. May the power of the Holy Spirit fill you to overpower you. May his gifts be demonstrated in your life. May his fruit grow up from within you. May you be a powerful witness for Jesus everywhere you go. And may you make a difference in your world. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Amen. One chapter we have somehow when people left the church. It says, You are now entering the mission field. Go for it.